Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Introduction to Transmission Planning. Uh, in this video, we will learn that uh, how transmission planning is done, what factors should we consider. Also, we will learn that what is transmission in telecommunication networks. So, first, I will begin with a small introduction about myself. My name is Abdul Aziz Khan. I am a telecom engineer. PMP certified having more than 20 years of experience of planning and uh, network performance monitoring and project management. Nowadays I am uh, started making some videos to uh, make people learn about uh, what I have learned in my life. Also I am learning as well. I am interested in uh, learning STN, NFV, Big Data. Hopefully very soon you will see some of my videos on these topics as well, inshallah. You can always connect to me and contact me through my email or LinkedIn and you can subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends as well. So let's get back to the topic. First I want to introduce you to what is transmission and uh, whenever we are sitting with some friends or in family then uh, the transmission that we are talking about is something else. It's a car transmission that we most commonly, most common people knows about the transmission is the car transmission. In a car transmission we have an engine on one side and then we have the tire on the other side. So the power is generated in the engines and it's transmitted towards the tire so that the car could run. So for this purpose we have a transmission network, a small network of uh, <coughs> shafts and uh, gears which is used to smoothly convey all this power from the source towards the sink. So this is one kind of transmission and uh, the other kind of very known transmission is the power transmission. We have some power generation houses like the dams or the thermal power or solar power and this power is being consumed in our homes or offices and everywhere. So here also we have a transmission network which connects these generation systems to the consumers. So here also we can see one thing that all these two examples, the power is generated somewhere and is consumed somewhere else and the flow of power is unidirectional. The power is consumed and sent in one direction only. But uh, the transmission that we are talking about, the telecom domain, here also we have some data generation or the generation houses like the videos or internet or enterprise network. Uh, you must have used any all of these uh, networks somehow, I mean, if you are you watch videos or you watch YouTube on internet or Facebook or you use the enterprise network for your booking of your flights or hotels or using your office from your home or many other things. So on one side we have the generation systems, on the other side we have the users which consume this generated data. And this data is generated and it's put in some kind of data centers. So <clears throat> The users on the left side, the small, medium or enterprise user or the mobile user, they have to use, they want to use these services which are generated on here on the right side. So they are connected through some kind of networks. These networks, they use or imply some kind of transmission networks, um, mostly on optical fiber or on uh, cables or sometimes they are wireless like uh, in mobile or Wi-Fi. So this is a typical uh, trans network which use transmission uh, a lot. But this transmission because the network is quite complex nowadays, it's not very easy to identify that this part is using this kind of transmission. It's all, it's a mixture of a lot of things. So let's see that what kind of transmissions we have and uh, what are uh, the goods in those kind of transmission. So we have basically two kind of transmission uh, physically. One is uh, wireless and the other is wired. In the wireless transmission we use either light or microwave. 
Both of them are waves, but uh, light is a visible wave and microwave is a non-visible wave. Light is basically unlicensed, uh, but microwave has some part licensed and some part is unlicensed. In the light, we have uh, free space optics where we use lasers to transmit the data. And also we have infrared, which is mostly now used in uh, TV remotes. And then we have Li-Fi, it's a future kind of thing, it's a very new thing now, where we do use light for uh, high bandwidth transmissions. But it's uh, not publicly used up till now as per my information. Uh, in microwave, <coughs> we have microwave radios which use both licensed and unlicensed uh, bands. And also we have Wi-Fi which is used in uh, unlicensed band of 2.4 and 500 gigahertz. Uh, microwave use basically 7 gigahertz or 13 gigahertz uh, frequencies. In the wild we have uh, um, then copper or optical fiber. So in copper we have either coaxial cable which has a single cable in the center and it is used a lot in uh, TV and uh, also we have multiple cables or the ethernet cables which has for example 4 pairs or 10 pairs or 100 pairs of cables which is used to transport the data. In optical fiber we have two kind of fibers uh, single mode or multi mode. I have some other videos on optical fiber if you, that you can see and you can learn if you want to know about, about optical fiber networks. So in coaxial we have different diameter cables um, like uh, one inch, half inch, quarter inch and in ethernet cables we have different categories like category 5 or category 6 cables. In optical fiber we have uh, in single mode we have 15, 15 nanometer which is very long range then we have 1310 which is medium range. The uh, multi mode cable has 850 nanometer and it's used within data centers only don't have a very long range. So based on transmission speed, we have two technologies. One is called Ethernet. Uh, Ethernet can go up to gigabit per second or megabit per second. And then there are some other um, capacities as well. Like for example, we can have FC, which is mostly used for storage area networks. And then we have GFP and TV. Uh, in Ethernet Mbps is generally we can go up to 100 Mbps it is mostly on uh, Ethernet cables or copper cables uh, for gigabit per second we can go up to 400 gigabit per second but for 400 gigabit we must be using optical fiber which would because it's very high data rate and the other technology is the TDM technology which is you can say a legacy or quite old technology but uh, from DDM we have evolved to uh, the DWDM or OTN. OTN is a future technology which is a mix of uh, DWDM and high capacity. Uh, you can say we can take uh, like for example we can take 400 gigabit per second on OTN. So TDM is basically you can say time slot based and uh, the technology is basically legacy but it is also uh, emerging through this OTN network and uh, on STH we have EVENS and STM1s and in EVENS we can go up to 63 EVENS or multiple 63 EVENS but it is not a lot used now. For STM1 we can go up to 56 but it is also legacy we can use 256 on optical as well on OTN as well. And in DWDM or OTN, we can have lambdas. These lambdas, they can take any kind of signal. I mean, they can take a 400 qubit signal or they can take 100 megabit signal and they can even take E1 or STM1. They can have a big, very high variety of signals and they can transport the signal on a single fiber through DWDM or op optical transport network or OTN network. We can have up to 192 channels on a single fiber. So if you are planning for a network, these are some of the factors that we should consider. Basically, if you are planning for a big network, then there may be some site issues like uh, power and space issues that we should know in advance. 
if we are planning a network on a existing network then we should take care of these two issues very well otherwise we may have some surprises also the service that we have to take from one end to the other end we have to uh, design the service to cater for the delay and the capacity issues i mean if it's a gaming service or any financial service which cannot uh, take the delays then we have to design it in such a way that we don't give it any extra delay the budgets we should take care of everything in the budget not only the initial cost or the operating cost we should take care of everything so we should take care of the total cost of ownership tcos even the O&M also we should take care that uh, the system that we are uh, using its O&M is easy and we have everything in uh, the vendor can supply everything or we have everything in our uh, um, portfolio to operate these technologies easily. Also the vendor specific thing like for example we should know the vendor roadmap so that if we have got to evolve in the future, if we want to upgrade or we want to use some new features, so the vendor should be able to do it or not. Also, the vendor should be financially capable so that he can deliver these things properly. So this is not exhausting this. I mean, you cannot add a lot of things, but these are some of the factors that if they are considered well uh, in the initial planning that you don't get a lot of hiccups uh, in the future. So I hope you should like this uh, presentation and if you have any question or if you have any doubts in your mind, this is a just introduction. I have not gone in detail. I have not gone in details of uh, these things. Uh, but if you have any question or if you have any comment, please contact me. I'll be waiting for your email. See you in my next video. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.